But fast forward in time in 2016, this is where our story takes a drastic turn. It was no longer sunshine, rainbows, and butterflies for Jalen Hurd, and he struggled a lot. It always sucks, though, because guys like this are going to be remembered as the five-star athlete that was washed up and could never make it, but it was out of his control. Many years ago, there was a running back, or actually my bad, let me give him the credit and respect he deserves. There was a five-star running back coming out of the state of Tennessee, and he was an outstanding prospect. And when I say he was an outstanding prospect, I mean it to the fullest. Some sites had him listed at six foot five, but for sake of this video, we're gonna say he was six foot four, roughly 230 pounds. This guy couldn't be stopped in high school. He had 3,357 rushing yards and 43 touchdowns. Oh, wait a minute, wait a minute, my apologies. You think I mean for his entire career? No, that was just his junior season. 43 touchdowns in one year, unreal, and I think that speaks for itself. It wasn't even close. In his class, he was easily the best running back. And many people thought he was going to go on to be a stud in the NFL at running back or wide receiver because he could do a little bit of everything. And you know what? I'd go as far as to saying this. I think it would have been a delusional and a crazy take to say that he wouldn't make it to the NFL and he wouldn't prosper. But what if I were to tell you that Mr. Jalen Hurd here... He didn't play not one single snap in the NFL. That's hard to fathom even for myself. When I was doing all my research for this video and gathering information, some of the stuff I saw, even though I knew a lot about him already, it shocked me. Let's just say that his football career, more importantly, his livelihood, it took a turn for the worse. This is one of the most intriguing stories I've ever covered and I've ever seen in the football world in general. But what's even more mind boggling about all of this is the fact that nobody else has even talked about it. And there's a lot of questions people have been asking about this man even till this day, but it all circles back to the one, and I mean the one big question we're going to try to get to the bottom of in today's video. What really happened to Jalen Hurd? Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, hope all of you are having a great and fantastic day, and also hope you're as excited to get into this video as I am. If you like story videos like these, number one, consider subscribing to the channel. We'd love to have you here. It's 100% free, and it helps out the channel tremendously. And number two, leave some recommendations down below. If there's a certain player or a certain situation you think's worthy of a story video, yeah, just leave a comment, and more than likely, we'll make that video. That's all I got for y'all. Hope you enjoy the video. Get you a snack, get you a popcorn, get you a favorite meal you like to eat when you watch a video, because trust me, I do the same thing. But all right, Matt, blah, blah, shut the crap up. No, that's what I do. Let's get into it. Man, oh man, Jalen Hurd. This is a name and player that I remember just like it was yesterday. To get into his story, though, come on, man. You know how we do things around here. We got to throw it all the way back to where things started. You know how the high school career goes. You know your boy Matt likes to zoom through this because it's relatively simple. One of the best high school recruits in the country, and he dominated the competition. They couldn't keep up with him. Played his high school football in the city of Hendersonville, Tennessee. Shout out to Tennessee. That is a neighboring state of mine. And I don't want to share all of his stats and everything he did, but the one big stat I want to share is that he rushed, like I told you guys in the intro, for over 3,000 yards and had 43 touchdowns his junior season. And I gotta throw this in there as well. In the state championship, he had 394 yards and seven, count them, seven touchdowns. What about that? And to make things even better if it wasn't good enough for you, that wasn't even his senior year. That was his junior season. His senior year, unfortunately, and we gotta bring this up because it plays a huge role and a huge part in our story, doing a little foreshadowing here. He only got to play in one game because he suffered an injury and missed the rest of the season. He wound up injuring his shoulder, and at the time, it didn't really seem like a big deal because, eh, it doesn't matter. He's gonna go play college football somewhere. But come to find out later in this story, that shoulder injury plays a big part in everything else. Like I told you guys in the intro as well, five-star recruit, number one running back, and everybody wanted him, but he decided to go to Tennessee. And although at the time, Tennessee was still the Tennessee that sucked, it's hard to play as a true freshman for any SEC team. But I guess Jalen Hurd didn't get the memo about that because as a freshman, true freshman at that, he started nine out of 13 games. And in that 2014 season, yet again, freshman year, he had 190 carries for nearly 900 yards on the dot and five touchdowns, averaging 4.7 yards per pop. Not too shabby, if you gotta ask me. Really good season, outstanding. But the best part about it was everybody's like, man, if he was doing this as a freshman... I wonder what he's going to do next year and the year after. And everybody had high expectations for him heading into his sophomore year, which would be in 2015, and 
He lived up to him. His workload increased a ton. He had 277 carries for over 1,200 yards, averaging exactly 4.7 yards per pop again and 12 touchdowns. And I remember this like it was yesterday as well. There was a lot of conversations going around that year that if Jalen Hurd could go to the NFL draft right then and there, he'd have been a first round pick. But remember, he was a true sophomore, so he was ineligible for the NFL draft, so he had no choice. He had to come back for that junior season. And another key piece of the story that I don't think a lot of people are gonna throw in there if you weren't keeping up with Tennessee football back in 2014, 2015, 16, is that in 15, the year, Alvin Kamara also transferred from Alabama to go to Tennessee. And this was big because in that 2015 season, that's when Alvin Kamara, he was learning the ropes and he was getting some carries for Tennessee. You know what? I'll actually pull it up. Let's see how many carries Alvin Kamara got in 2015. Okay, yeah, I got it pulled up right here. So yeah, remember Jalen Hurd, he got, what was it? Like 270 something carries. Well, Alvin Kamara, he only got 107. But here was the kicker with Alvin Kamara. Yeah, he only got 107 carries. But he was averaging 6.5 yards per carry. Vice versa, Alvin, not Alvin Kamara, my apologies, uh, Jalen Hurd, he was only averaging 4.7 yards per carry. And in the backfield as well, Jalen Hurd, he was a good receiver, but Alvin Kamara, do I need to say anything more? He was Alvin Kamara. And I can't emphasize this enough, the Alvin Kamara and Jalen Hurd situation was very weird. Because yes, Jalen Hurd, he was nothing short of fantastic, but... Alvin Kamara was coming onto the scene pretty much like Jameer Gibbs and Jamison Williams. Everybody knew Jalen Hurd was a really good football player, but every single time Alvin Kamara touched the ball, you found yourself sitting up in your seat a little bit more going, oh man, he might take this to the house. He was that type of player, and although Jalen Hurd was the main back getting the heavy workload, everybody knew deep down, oh yeah, Alvin Kamara is better than him. And it's just due to the fact that you can't coach speed and Alvin Kamara had speed. All in all though, Jalen Hurd had a great 2015 season and he was still high on all the draft boards. But fast forward in time into 2016, this is where our story takes a drastic turn. It was no longer sunshine, rainbows, and butterflies for Jalen Hurd and he struggled a lot. He was battling injuries all season, only wound up playing in seven games in which he had 122 carries but only had 451 total yards and that only equated to 3.7 yards per carry, which isn't good at all. It just wasn't a very good year for him. On the other hand, for Alvin Kamara, he had a great year again. And in my humble opinion, it was a combination of two things. Number one, he was banged up all year long. And number two, the defenses, they were locking in on him. The beauty of being a true freshman when you're coming into college football is there's no film on you whatsoever. Nobody's scouting for Jalen Hurd in 2014. Therefore, he went off and same thing in 15. But by late in your second season and third year, oh yeah, there's so much film on you. They know what you love and they know all your tendencies. And to make a long story short here, Jalen Hurd came to the conclusion that his best bet is to leave Tennessee and go elsewhere and that's exactly what he did. And I don't want to spend too much time talking about this, but I remember thinking back then, I thought it was a weird decision because some people are going to try to argue and say, well, oh, he left because Alvin Kamara was going to be the new RB1, but that's not the case because after that 2016 season, Alvin Kamara declared for the NFL draft. So Jalen Hurd could have came back for his senior season and he wouldn't have had to be looking over his shoulder at Alvin Kamara and sharing the workload. No, he still would have been RB1 more than likely. At the time, it didn't make a lot of sense, but looking back on it, hey, it may have came down to this. He just wanted a new fresh look and a new start, and I understand that. So in April 2017, he announces that he's going to be transferring to no other than Baylor. And this is interesting because back then, you didn't have the transfer portal, so he had to sit down a season. Didn't play in 2017. He winds up playing in 2018, and check this out. Didn't play as a running back, he switched positions to now being a wide receiver. And guess what? If you're thinking he failed as a wide receiver, that couldn't be any farther from the truth because he balled out. He had 69 catches for 946 yards and four touchdowns. I'd say that's really good for his first year ever being a wide receiver. Oh yeah, might as well throw in there as well. On the ground, he did have 48 carries for 209 yards. So Jalen Hurd showed that it didn't matter where he was playing, he was an athlete and he was gonna make the best out of it. Unfortunately though, his college career ended in a terrible way because he got hurt in the last game of the season for Baylor. That also affected his stats because he didn't get to play in the bowl game either. In that season as well, he was also named the Big 12 Conference Offensive Newcomer of the Year. And with that being his senior season, remember, played three years at Tennessee and now this one year at Baylor, 
That was it. He had no choice but to go to the NFL draft, and he did just that. And he got selected pretty high when you consider the circumstances. The 49ers picked him up in the third round with the 67th overall pick. If you gotta ask me, I think that's high, especially when you're taking a guy who played running back three years at the collegiate level. But here's the kick with that. Although he got drafted in the third round, got a nice little check, couple million dollars, he was placed on the injury reserve list because of a back injury. And that back injury was so bad in 2019, he couldn't play the entire season. But no big deal, right? Because he's gonna rehab, he's gonna get healthy, sit a year out, and maybe that's gonna be good for his legs. But unfortunately, when he was getting ready for the 2020 season, he wound up tearing his ACL doing some drills. And I'm sure most of you are familiar with an ACL tear. You tear your ACL, you're done for the entire season. And same thing happened for him yet again. Missed the 2019 season due to injury and missed the 2020 season due to injury. Two full years have gone by where Jalen Hurd hasn't even been eligible to play. We're not even talking about suiting up and, oh, you just didn't play. No, he can't even suit up. You know how this goes. Not too much to say for 2020. He's rehabbing the ACL injury all season long, preparing for 2021. Well, guess what? In 2021, in early September, he was placed on the injury reserve list again with another knee injury. And the 49ers wound up releasing him in November of 2021 because, well, there's not too much to say. They had him for three years and... He was injured every single year. They had no choice. And it sucks that they cut him, but I can't fault the team too much because at the end of the day, this is a business and you're paying a guy that hasn't even played a snap for you in three years. So they wound up cutting him and Jalen Hurd continued to work hard, try to overcome the injuries. And in 2023 of last summer, he signed with the New England Patriots. He was healthy, ready to go, had a lot of time off, did all this rehab, all this work. And I admire that so much. And I'll get to that in just a second. And guess what? Literally... The next week, one week after he signed with the Patriots, hurt his knee again. Well, actually, my apologies. They've labeled it as a quote-unquote undisclosed injury, but I've heard a lot of rumors and speculations that it was a knee injury. But it doesn't matter what kind of injury it was. You get the point. It was an injury. And Jalen Hurd finally realized, hey, football, maybe. It's not for me. Maybe this is a sign from God. And he retired after that injury. His official retirement from the NFL was on August 1st of 2023. And I have so much empathy for Jalen Hurd because as a former athlete myself, that's what put an end to my career, injuries. I tore not one, but both of my ACLs and I came to the executive decision, hey, maybe sports aren't for, or it's not that they're not for me, but my journey's over. It's time to go into other ventures and do other things because after two major surgeries like I had, it's over with. And Jalen Hurd, he had more than I had. He had like three, four, five, six. And non-athletes don't understand this part as well. Not only is it hard physically to come back from an injury like this and major injuries that he suffered, but mentally, that's probably the hardest part. It's taxing on your brain. People just don't understand how hard these athletes work. And imagine working your entire life to get to the NFL. And as soon as you get there, boom, seizing ending injury no big deal though i'll rehab this entire year work my butt off and i'll get to play next year then boom another seizing ending injury dang this sucks back to back seizing any injuries well i'm gonna continue to work hard and then boom third straight seizing ending injury you can't make it up i can't imagine mentally what jalen Hurd was going through because it's tough i can relate a little bit but not on the same scale as jalen Hurd. and mentally whew, I know it was a battle. But as I've gotten older and slightly matured, I've learned myself, hey, that's life. It's not fair, and that's the reality. Sometimes you gotta say, you know what, I'm done beating this dead horse, and I gotta do something else. And I'm proud of Jalen Hurd for finally doing that and making that decision. It always sucks, though, because guys like this are gonna be remembered as the five-star athlete that was washed up and can never make it, but it was out of his control. And the reason this story fascinated me so much, and I don't think we've ever had a story like this on the channel before that I can recall, is 99% of the stories we do, what happens? It's a five-star recruit who was hanging out with the wrong people and just made terrible decisions. He ruined his career for stuff he was doing off the field. Not injuries, just bonehead decisions. But in this case and scenario, Jalen Hurd, from everything I've seen, he was a good, humble dude, and he just had the injury bug. And that's also the main reason I am very harsh and very critical, and I have zero sympathy whatsoever for guys that sabotage their own career. Because there's guys like Jalen Hurd who are willing to do everything right, stay out of trouble, and still doesn't work out for him. As far as it goes for his personal life, though, because I know some of you may be curious, as I was myself, doesn't have an Instagram and doesn't have a Twitter, so we're out of the loop there. But, and I have a really big but, here's a great part about our channel. I know there's going to be at least one person watching this video 
where you know something about Jalen Hurd and his whereabouts. So let us know in the comment section. If I had to guess here, he's probably coaching football, doing something along those lines. Like I said, this guy, he's got a good head on his shoulders. Unfortunately, he's probably not going to be able to retire off of a third round selection with the 67th overall pick because when was he? He got drafted, yeah, in 2019. So that wasn't too long ago. He probably got around mm, $5 million maybe after taxes. Three and a half, four million. I can't exactly remember how much a third round selection is getting, and maybe that's even pushing it, but I believe he got around a couple million dollars. And as long as he plays his cards right, invests correctly, buys some real estate, just makes smart financial decisions, he should be a okay. There's many more things I could say, but we'll end it off there. Let me know your thoughts down below. But, uh, Robin! <laughs>